Hey everyone, it's Alien Da Vinci. So, um, I got a request not too long ago to do a video on some games that I would recommend uh, for tabletop RPG games. Uh, games that are based off of literature, games that you have to play with dice and uh, rule books. So, I just set up my table for a game night with my family, uh, with my miniatures and my dice. And um, I got some books that I've displayed uh, that I want to go over with you guys uh, that I'm interested in. Uh, one of those books uh, and games is Dungeons and Dragons, the popular 5D, 5th uh, edition. Uh, and then I have Pathfinders. And uh, we're going to go over a game that I uh, consider one of my favorites. Uh, which, is, which is Numenere. Um, Numenere, I might have uh, mispronounced that a few times, but uh, it's Numenere uh, for the Ninth World. I, I usually just call it Ninth World. Um, so we'll be going over that and uh, the starter sets and the tombs that I purchased, which have all of the core books to play all these games. So check us out in the Ninth Matrix, Alien Da Vinci. I set up my table for a game I'll be running, uh, dungeon scenario wise. This is a uh, a Malifaux tabletop uh, dungeon kit that I put together. This is one of the uh, terrain systems that I own. And I like this one because it's easy to pull out and it's easy to, uh, you know, without having to rebuild it, it's easy to tuck away and pull it out as I need it. So I haven't really got to play any of these games in quite some time but I'm hoping to change all that uh, a lot of these miniatures that I, I have in these uh, glass cabinets and these shelves that my daughter bought me are to store uh, miniatures that came with box sets that I own like Zombicide and um, you got Zombicide you got Descent you got Dungeon Saga I play those games but those aren't traditional tabletop RPG games. Those are uh, those are more of the uh, board game, uh, so it was narrative-driven type games. So what we have here are literature-based games, games that come with rules and books that you would have to read to base the scenarios. That if you're the dungeon master. And in my case, usually I am. You would have to set the game up for your players. And these uh, books have a lot of the resources that you would use to play these games. So in order to play these games, you know, you end up having to invest in um, different books to uh, create different worlds and different uh, missions for your players to have uh, their, their adventures in. So we're gonna go over 
what we have and like I said these are these are my favorites some of my favorites um, I actually am going to make another video on a collection that I own that I haven't been able to play so I can't necessarily call it my favorite but I do have a large collection of uh, of the uh, what's the name of that game uh, the others the others I have a whole entire collection of uh, the others the apocalypse systems uh, the seven deadly sins um, that I can't really say that game is my favorite because I haven't been able to play it but it looks good and um, when I do play it I'll make a video to update you guys on that one but we're gonna go over these what I have on the table and uh, how I, I plan on including what I have on the table into my scenarios that I have created for this dungeon. So let's start from the, my right, left, to the left. We got the essentials, which I haven't had the open, the uh, Dungeons and Dragons essential box, because the essential box includes things that most first time players to tabletop board games wouldn't have. A lot of the things in this box I already own from the previous Dungeons and Dragons games that I played, but this box includes, uh, you got dice here, you got some maps in the box. Um, it has a lot of stuff in this box that would get uh, the beginner player started. Um, it even has a, uh, a dungeon screen for the dungeon master which protects all the dungeon master's uh, game elements that he would use to throw at the characters so they couldn't see what he was planning and plotting out. All of these things that come in this set would be things that eventually you would get in other tabletop board games when you pur pur purchase those or when you started collecting if you were going to be creating scenarios for your friends so this is the essential and I believe this came out in the last year um, previously they had the starter set which this is the starter set for Dungeons and Dragons for the 5.0 edition these are all 5.0 the updated versions for Dungeons and Dragons and the previous version of the essentials was the starter set and the starter set came with basically the same things that the essential has in it but less it didn't have the dungeon master screen it doesn't look like it have maps it has character uh, character sheets and a set of dice in here and it has a starter looks like it has a starter mission that would get people used to playing Dungeons and Dragons getting them comfortable with the rules so that's what we have here in the starter the starter set so you would probably first purchase the starter set and then purchase the essentials okay with that I purchased Xanathar's book of everything Xanathar in the Dungeons and Dragons world is a beholder which is a giant uh, monster that has a giant eye and octopus tentacles with eyes on the ends of each tentacle he has mental uh, um, psychic abilities he has psychic abilities and this thing could control your mind it could uh, I heard that it could actually just think about you not existing and you wouldn't exist so uh, this book probably helps explain a lot of the things that I wouldn't know like I said I'm not an expert I like playing these games I like creating scenarios um, I'm trying to get more active but these books would give you insight onto the Dungeons and Dragons world and help you create a good imagination, uh, imaginative story for your uh, your friends and your your characters to play in. 
Also, along with the Dungeons and Dragons series, I have the uh, this Dungeons and Dragons tomb. Now they sold these these tombs, which comes with the core books that you would need to play the core book for Dungeons and Dragons. It comes with uh, let's see here. We got the core book. We got which is the, the player's handbook. That's what players would need to play Dungeons and Dragons. And then you have the monster manual, which basically if you wanted to have more information about the monsters that the dungeon master was throwing at you, or if you were the dungeon master, you would use the monster manual to do the research on the monsters that you would include into the tabletop board game. And then you have uh, the, dungeon, yeah, the dungeon master's guide which helps the dungeon master create scenarios for you to play in the dungeons. That, that's the guide for the dungeon master. So someone like me creating a game for my friends to come over and play, um, I would use the dungeon master's guide along with the monster manual and the players could benefit from the player's handbook. So this is the tune for Dungeons and Dragons. When I purchased this, I believe I purchased this for $180. I've looked it up, the price for this particular one, because this has uh, the limited edition art cover, which is this dragon in the gold and black uh, casing with the Dungeons and Dragons uh, logo or emblem. It comes with a, like I said, all three of the books that you would need to play, but it also comes with the Dungeon Master screen like in the uh, essentials kit it comes with the dungeon master screen so that the dungeon master can create the scenario and the players couldn't see what the dungeon master had in store for them so that's another cool thing that came with this tune but the price has went up like i said i bought that for about 180 dollars when it first came out i pre-ordered it and the last i checked it was about 800 dollars so they still have other, like I said, this is a limited edition art cover. So they have the ones that weren't living a limited edition art cover and I'm pretty sure you can probably find those for about $150 to $200. So that is my Dungeons and Dragons essentials for all of my games that I play for Dungeons and Dragons. I have scenarios and uh, printouts, PDFs I have for uh, how to create different scenarios in the game but I have my own and you would combine all of that to play in a dungeon or a table top map that you would have with your friends along with the dice these are uh, Dungeons and Dragons dice from the Tomb of Annihilation I bought these um, because I like them they look pretty cool um, they were pretty neat looking when I purchased these. Uh, I also have a, you know, a nice little collection of dice that I purchased just in case I lost them or lost one or two, whatever. But you, it's never, never bad to have too many dice for these games because they do get lost. But yeah, I thought this Tomb of Annihilation set was pretty cool because it came in this gold. Uh, casing underneath the sleeve that it came in that shows the Tomb of Annihilation. So I thought that was pretty cool. And that will be my set of dice when I take over my friend's house to play. That's what I use those for if I was ever to do that outside of this pandemic. So we went through the Book of Xanathar so we completed what we have as far as books. For Dungeons and Dragons. We got some spell cards for Dungeons and Dragons. These spell cards are pretty cool, pretty neat, because with uh, the book of uh, that I have with Xanathar's Book of Everything, these spell cards are basically like, I would say like uh, cheat cards that allows whoever is playing as a mage to have quick access to what their spells do and the you know the backgrounds of, and the bios of what these things are these uh cards show you the damage 
um, the casting times, the ranges on the spells, and the durations of the spells, so that you wouldn't have to, if you had created a character and you um, got used to this type of magic that that character, you know, wielded, you could use these cards instead of using the book to reference to these spells every time the dungeon master asked you or one of the uh, other players in the game asked you, you know, are you sure that that that, you're, that that spell is supposed to take that much damage or that range on that spell is that far? You could just whip out one of these cards. And I thought that was cool because I, uh, I usually use a rogue that has illusion spells. Uh, more of a trickster rogue, so I do use a little magic when I play. Um, so what we have here is something else that I just recently found this year. Um, just like these essentials and starter set kits. I found these at Walmart. These are Dungeons and Dragons miniatures. They're pretty cool. Um, if you needed some miniatures to play with, if you bought all this stuff, let's say you bought all this stuff at Walmart, you could get started instantly by purchasing some of these miniatures and these were cheap. I might have went over these uh, in one of my previous videos when I was explaining miniature figurines, but this uh, set cost me, I believe this set was two, two dollars. This was a, uh, one of the more expensive sets. I think I may have, may have paid uh, 10 or 15 for this one. And um, we got one more somewhere around here, but it, it, hold, it holds a dragon, um, the uh, Dungeons and Dragon. I have it somewhere around here. Well, it's lost. It got lost, but it holds the dragon for Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, probably need to find that, but we'll keep going. These are some of the miniatures that I have that I bought to go with Dungeons and Dragons and uh, Pathfinders, and we'll get to Pathfinders, but it's the same uh, idea with uh, Dungeons and Dragons. You got Pathfinders, and then you got Dungeons and Dragons mystery boxes. When you purchase these boxes, um, there is a, a, a few of ran, a few of the random characters from Dungeons and Dragons, the based off of the box that you bought. I bought Tomb of Annihilation, and then I bought um, here we got the uh, yeah the Guild Masters guys to uh, Ravnica, and Ravnica is a world based off of Magic and the Gatherings. Uh, uh, their whole generation their whole uh sort story uh, magic in the gathering created a world of magic and sorcerers and what dungeons and dragons recently did was that's what i was the word i'm looking for their universe magic the gathering's universe their world rab uh ravnica was included into dungeons and dragons worlds so you have those that, and these are all fantasy, like I said, based off of fantasy literature. So you have it to the point where you can easily include Magic and the Gathering into Dungeons and Dragons or Pathfinders now. So these are miniatures that I purchased to go along with the games. These are actually miniatures that I 3D printed myself. This is my own personal Dungeons and Dragons party. I 3D printed them and painted them. But um, the ones that I'm setting up now came out of the mystery sets. And the ones here, they are all from box sets that I already own. And um, I have three rows of them. So you can mix and match. your he these, The bottom row here is my heroes. The blue ones here. And you can mix and match these miniatures throughout any one of your fantasy games. Um, you're the one calling the shots and making the rules, so you can do whatever you want. 
with these tabletop board games. That's why I enjoy playing them. Um, I mean, there are rules. You stay within the rules. You can have a great time with your friends. It's something, especially with this pandemic, I feel like it's something that people should be trying to experience a lot more of. I like it. Um, but yeah, I got all these little guys off here on the side out of those mystery boxes for Pathfinders and Dungeons and Dragons mystery boxes. So let's move on to the next set of books that I have. The core books that I have here are for Pathfinders. We have Pathfinders core. This is the, uh, the, the core book for everything. So just as like I said for Dungeons and Dragons, you got a three set tomb here that has all the books that you would need to play for Dungeons and Dragons. This is the core book for Pathfinders. This has everything you would need to start a good ga game and have a campaign with your friends playing Pathfinders. But also, we got with Pathfinders, these came out of a different set that I owned, but this is the beginner box. And it comes with, just like the starter set for Dungeons and Dragons, it comes with starter campaigns uh, this is the basically the dungeon master's guide to get started with creating a story and uh, you got the hero's handbook would be the player's handbook like in Dungeons and Dragons but it's, instead they're calling it the hero's handbook one more in here but it's gotten mixed in uh, now that's just some advertisements that came with it but with inside the Pathfinders box here you would have a set of dice some starter uh, character sheets to start create uh, creating game characters and uh, a set of rules to play your first first story but then you would combine that with the core book and you would have everything outside of the, all of the missions that you can purchase from uh, the uh, the manufacturer of the game um, which is Paizo. Paizo is the one who manufactures path Pathfinders. Um, you could purchase all types of scenarios through their websites or PDFs that you could download to your phone and you could play any type of scenario based off of the Pathfinders uh, uh, universe. So Pathfinders and Dungeons and Dragons are on my top pick for tabletop role playing games based off of literature. And uh, like I said, you would need the books, the core books, and the player's handbooks to kind of get started with playing the game. The dungeon master would need a set of different books like the master, uh, the game master's guide or the dungeon master's guides to set up the game so that the players could play within the world. These games bring a lot of imagination out of you. Um, and just like it implies, this is role playing. So it takes you to become a character or act as a character to, to play this game and in these type of games and enjoy yourself. Um, it takes a little bit of acting and improv. But here we go with the last set I have on table is Magic the Gathering. So this, out of all of the uh, games I have talked about, like Dungeons and Dragons, Pathfinders, this is a little bit different. This includes miniatures, so you can play with miniatures just like these games. But Magic the Gathering is based off of a deck building card game um, where people would collect cards. And I'm not gonna like I'm not gonna explain all this stuff into details what these games are because I'm not an expert on Magic the Gathering. I always enjoyed the art from Magic in the Gathering. I always enjoyed the cards, the way that the characters were created the skills and things like that, but I never was able to play the game growing up. 
and as an adult um, I really just would get into like collecting that uh, I'm a big that's that's what most of this is is collecting so Magic the Gathering though was the Planescape Walkers or I'm sorry Planes Walkers this game is called Magic the Gathering Arena of Planes Walkers this is a more of a board game with set rules based off the generation of Magic the Gathering that allows you to play with mages um, these different mages they have in the box so you got these you got these miniatures over here in the box and you have rules and you have a giant board a really cool board that expands as you play it and you have cards just like Magic in the Gathering to represent all of the different um, I would say spirits and beasts that they can summon so I haven't been able to play this game yet but definitely one of the games that I'm interested in and that's why it's on the board to go along with this and as I said they've recently wrote the uh, games the uh, game uh, guild masters guild masters guide uh, to Ravnica which is Dungeons and Dragons included world of uh, Magic the Gathering they've included the world from Magic and the Gathering into Dungeons and Dragons so that's another that's another reason to have this board game because you can also use these miniatures and a lot of what's going on inside of here which is monsters outside of the miniatures that are heroes and that come painted pre-painted already um, you have a lot of other miniatures you can use as monsters to play with some of your other games if you didn't have too many miniatures from the beginning so that was um, some of the games that I would recommend people playing if they're interested I know a lot of you if you're even interested in playing tabletop role-playing games you've already got Dungeons and Dragons on your top list so I was just trying to show you some of the things that you can get when you're trying to start off that could help you you know get into the game with your friends and give you a little kickstart so we're gonna go over something that I have not pulled out and put on the board and have not talked about um, I actually just received a uh, a box um, and I haven't opened it so we're gonna talk about that together but I'm gonna pull this stuff off so I have room to discuss it in open box but what we do have um, I can tell you this before I do get into the box um, a few years ago I played a game on PC which I play a lot of PC games but a role-playing game based off of a tabletop game called uh, Torment Tides of Nevermira. It's based off of the Ninth World, which is a uh, another literature based role playing uh, world. Nine million years in, in the future. The game was uh, background is every nine or every, yeah, every world has a or was uh, the Ninth World. And uh, Monty Cook was the uh, the writer of this this world, the story uh, that allows us to play this on table tabletop. And uh, instead of me trying to sum it up on my own, I'm just going to read from the tomb itself. Um, so they say we have had eight worlds before ours, eight times the people of Earth over vast millennia built their civilizations. They reached heights we cannot even imagine now. They spoke to the stars, reshaped the creatures of the world, and they mastered forms of essence. They built cities and machines that have fallen to ruin, leaving only their vast outlines and barest remnants. This is the ninth world. The people of the prior worlds are gone, scattered, disappeared, or transcended. But their works remain in the places and devices that still contain sparks of their former functions. The uninformed call these magic, but the wise know these are our legacies. They are our future. Off of what happens when the world evolves from this civilization up into the future. So what we look at right now is, you know, what we think the future could possibly look at and or look like. 
And um, what we ended up with in, the, in Tides of Never Mirror is this, this spiritual mix of technology and cyberpunk type of uh, culture. It's really cool, it was really awesome. The game itself, because it was a, this particular one that I played was a video game, so I could follow the story and it was narrating it to me and I was actually having some action going on. I actually bought the tabletop uh, Nevermera uh, to check it out, but um, I, I didn't get the exact tabletop. What I ended up getting, I thought I was purchasing the tabletop at first, what I ended up getting was the deck builder, which is like, which is like Magic the Gathering, but for the ninth world. Got this, uh, this is a deck builder. So it's more of a card game, this one is, particularly, this one is more like a card game. So, and it's awesome because it's based off of the Ninth World, Nevermare, and all of the other locations that was included in the RPG, the tabletop role-playing game that, uh, I, you know, that I was thinking I purchased when I purchased this. This is a really neat thing here. It's really cool, but um, because when it opens up, it has a map in it. it has a map in all around it. So, and it comes with its cards and some dice. It, it has some, a lot of details in this box. I haven't played this game yet. Um, it's another one of those games that, like I said, I never got into Magic the Gathering. Um, so this is one of those games that I'm interested in learning with some friends and us checking it out. But it's neat because it comes in this nice obelisk box because uh, obelisk means a lot, uh, apparently, in the world, uh, in the ninth world on, the, on this game. So, I think it's a really interesting box set, um, and it's part of a, a universe that I, I'm very interested in playing, uh, which is the ninth world, Never Mirror. So, what I did get, I, since I realized I had purchased um, the card builder, deck builder game, I ended up purchasing the Ninth World Guidebook, which is how you get started with playing Never Mirror. That's the, the Ninth World Guidebook. And hopefully what's in this box is what I think it is. I'm crack this open. Yeah, we got here uh, the technology compendium. The technology compendium for the game. So this game is just like when I uh, was going over the Dungeons and Dragons sets. This game would be kind of like the Monster's Guide, but this displays all of the technology in the game. So you would have the Ninth World Guidebook, which would guide you on how to uh, how to play the game or the things that are in the world in Nevermare and you have the technology compendium to add to your, your scenarios that you were building for the tabletops so that you could throw monsters or in this sense technology um, items there's ciphers this cipher system in the uh, Nevermare world is pretty much your skill and upgrade system you would equip ciphers, and ciphers would give you bonuses, buffs, and uh, it could also give you uh, weapons, uh, the ability to attack people with certain 
weapons or attack skills. So that will help you be able to throw a lot of the the content from the ninth the ninth world into your into your story into your game. So since I have those two books, I can get started playing. But also since we did it with the Dungeons and Dragons and we did it with Pathfinders. We got the starter set, the box starter set to play the game. It comes with dice, it comes with maps, it comes with character sheets, posters, and pre-generated characters that are already here so that you don't have to use the blank character sheets to create characters. Um, and it has 12 different uh, game master instruction cards. It gives you everything you need to get used to what Nevermare is. Uh, but like I said, Nevermare is the ninth world. It's Earth's ninth world based off of nine million years in the future from now. Uh, Nevermare. So this is the starter set. You got the core book and you got your technology compendium. But also what we purchased was the tune. The tune gives you Basically, if you didn't have those books, you definitely need these two. I mean, those books wouldn't even, without the starter set, you couldn't do anything with those books. But with that, you would have the tomb. And the tomb gives you here the uh, discovery book and the destiny book. This would be everything you basically would need to play the game outside of having the dice. Outside of having the dice and the character sheets, which are things that you can always print out. Uh, this will give you everything, this, this tomb will give you everything in these two books inside of this tomb to play Nevermare. And guys, that's why I saved this for last, because this game, I played Tides of Nevermare on PC, but this game is probably gonna be set as my number one um, I like the universe I like the idea that the the enemies in this world are basically it's more a realistic game for me the things that happen in the future in this world are things that I can see actually happening there's a lot of things um, in this in this game that th explains where we're headed and um, it, when I was playing the game, it looked like it was something mo that I could uh, accept. So if you play games like Dungeons and Dragons and Pathfinders um, that put you in worlds that are uh, unique to you and you enjoy those, try playing Never Mirror. Uh, and that's the tabletop game. And Tides of Never Mirror, uh, Torment is the sequel from a game that came out, I believe it came out in 98, which is Torment, uh, a PC RPG game. Um, it was uh, based off of uh, the Planescapes, uh, which is what I would believe, I think it was kind of like a hell type, type of uh, dimension, but I haven't beat the game. I always played the game to like a certain point. I maybe played the game, maybe I'll say about 10 hours, and after the 10 hours, I will always go back and get to that same point. So I, I definitely want to play through uh, Torment, uh, Planescape. I believe that's the name, Planescape. Uh, uh, but Tides of Nevermare, Torment, Tides of Nevermare, was what brought me into the whole Nevermare uh, universe. So this, I'm going to wrap it up with for Nevermare being on my top tabletop role-playing game list. This is one of the ones that I would re recommend people try to find. And uh, Alien Da Vinci, I appreciate everybody for watching. This is the Ninth Matrix. Come check me out for my next videos. I'll be going over a few more games that I have that I think that are pretty cool and neat. But they have different sets of rules. Thanks, everybody. Hey guys, I also wanted to add that uh, the game Numenera 
it is a minimum of three players, which is perfect for me and my family. Um, it is two players and requires one person to be the game master. So you can buy any one of these starter sets I mentioned in this video, Dungeons and Dragons starter set and the Pathfinder starter set. It will require one of those players to be a game master or dungeon master so they can uh, summarize the rules to the players and get people started. Uh, like I said, Numenera is my number one pick for this video. Um, I am a big fan of Dungeons and Dragons, uh, but Numenera wins this because it has what you would expect from a Dungeons and Dragons game, but it puts you into the future and allows you to use your imagination with, uh, you know, the uh, newbies and the uh, the veterans. So you, all you players out there, should be able to enjoy the game Numenera. Try it out.